Hello, my name is C.J. Lovick, and it's my privilege in these last days to bring you great news. If you are in Christ, we are about to end our pilgrimage in this world that is passing away. I also have hopeful news if you are seeking answers to the most important questions in life. Perhaps you still have some doubts about where you will be spending eternity. If that describes you, then be encouraged as this video will put you on the path, the path to pardon and forgiveness that will lead you to the valley of decision where there is a Savior waiting to welcome you into His family. I would really encourage everyone to visit www.ribvideos.com where you can not only watch this entire 19-chapter, 5-hour video book, but so much more. The complete 19-chapter video book is only available at ribvideos.com. Everything I have produced on Rock Island Books over the past 15 years is now available to watch online or download at no charge, including over 220 videos, 14 of our best-selling illustrated books, 40 end times prophetic charts. All this is available to view and download at no charge. Go to ribvideos.com. Now there are skeptics everywhere, and in order to satisfy even the most cynical spirit, the Lord has graciously given us two historical events by which we can judge the veracity of his prophetic word. Two events that mark the exact beginnings of both the 40-year and the 390-year start dates. And what is that signal or sign? Let's read the words of the prophet Ezekiel, who leaves us a no doubt about what sign the Lord had in mind for both the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Reading from Ezekiel 4, starting in verse 1. Thou also, son of man, take thee a tile, and lay it before thee, and portray upon it the city, even Jerusalem, and lay siege against it, and built a fort against it, and cast a mount against it. Set the camp also against it, and set battering rams against it round about. Moreover, take thou unto thee an iron pan, and set it for a wall of iron between thee and the city, and set thy face against it, and it shall be besieged, and thou shalt lay siege against it. This shall be a sign to the house of Israel. Lie thee also upon thy left side. Lay the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it, according to the number of days that thou shalt lie upon it. Thou shalt bear their iniquity. For I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity, according to the number of days, three hundred and ninety days, so shalt thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. So let's ask a couple questions. Who is the house of Israel? What is the sign? How long is the period of iniquity? When does the time out for repentance begin? The answer is that the house of Israel is the northern kingdom, and the sign is the siege of Jerusalem by a foreign army. The time God is giving for repentance is 390 years. The start date for the time count begins in 701 B.C., the year the Assyrians lay siege to Jerusalem. And God even adds one more little detail that lets us know that while Jerusalem is under siege and being besieged, the Lord will not allow it to be destroyed as he will put a wall of iron around the city. Now let's look at the sign given to the house of Judah, reading from Ezekiel again. And when thou hast accomplished them, lie on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days, and I have appointed thee each day for a year. Therefore thou shalt set thy face toward the siege of Jerusalem, and thine arm shall be uncovered, and thou shalt prophesy against it. And behold, I will lay bands upon thee, and thou shalt not turn thee from one side to another till thou hast ended the days of thy siege. So let's ask the question. Who is the house of Judah? What is a sign? How long is the period of iniquity? When does the time out for repentance begin? And what is the difference between the sign for the house of Israel 
and the sign for the house of Judah? The answer is that the house of Judah is the southern kingdom, and the sign is the siege of Jerusalem by a foreign army. The time God is giving for repentance is 40 years. The start date for the time count begins in 70 AD, the year the Romans lay siege to Jerusalem. And God even adds one more detail that lets us know that this time Jerusalem will be besieged and the Lord will allow it to be destroyed as he will not put a wall of iron around the city. Two dates in time, 701 B.C. and 70 A.D. Two dates exactly 770 years apart, both prophesying a period of time in which both houses of Israel will be judged and letting us know exactly when that judgment will come to an end. We have already discovered the end of the judgment date based on the 40 years from the cross to the siege and destruction of Jerusalem and the temple that happened in 70 A.D. What about the end date for the house of Israel? The answer should not surprise you, as God wants you to know the answer. So let's do the math. 390 years multiplied by 7 equals 2,730 years. If we go forward 2,730 years from 701 B.C., what date do we land on? Again, the answer should not surprise you, but it should fill you with awe and wonder as we see God graciously telling us what is going to happen before it happens in order that we might be humbled and ready as Christians for his return and so that Israel might know that God has determined these events in order that Israel might repent and believe. The answer is that 2,730 years, starting with 701 B.C., takes you to the year 2030 exactly the same date that the 40-year multiplied by two seven periods gives us. So now we have two witnesses to the fact that something amazing is going to happen with Israel in the year 2030. Any guesses as to what that is? How about the promise that the two sticks, the two houses, have become one again? Keep in mind that there has never been in past history any time when the northern tribes have been released from the punishment they brought upon themselves. But the miracle is that God has restored the northern tribe to Israel. They have been brought back unrepentant and unbelieving, just like God said, but they are back in the land and united for the first time since King Solomon, who was the last king to rule over a united Israel. They have been returned to the land and become one Israel for the first time in over 2,700 years. Another miracle. They have been brought back so that they might repent and believe before the final time of repentance is over, and the only thing left is to be cast into everlasting punishment. A large remnant that the prophet Zechariah tells us will include one-third of believing, repentant Israel, and that includes both the house of Judah and the house of Israel, are going to enter into the Sabbath rest in the Jubilee year of 2031, on the exact year that starts the next dispensational countdown. And that will only end after 1,000 years of Yeshua HaMashiach's rule and reign, which will conclude only after 7,000 years. Keep in mind that this is all about the prophetic promises made to Israel. What happens in 2030 A.D.? If you go back 6,000 years from 2030 A.D., you land on the year that Adam sinned in 3971 B.C., so that's our first clue that this has something to do with sin and its consequences. Why is 2030 A.D. so important that the Lord revealed it prophetically at least three times that I know of? And with a careful study of ancient prophecy, I have no doubt it is revealed more than three times. You cannot help but notice that 2030 is connected with the world at large and specifically with Israel at its very worst times in their history as they are cast out of the land, their temple is destroyed, and they go into all the nations of the world as exiles and pilgrims for thousands of years. What is 2030 A.D. all about? Well, the answer is revealed in the 70th week of Daniel. 
the time of Jacob's trouble that reaches its apex in the final three and a half year period that we know as the Great Tribulation. How bad is this seven year tribulation? Yeshua tells us how bad it is in Matthew 24 22 when he says, And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those are the Jews, those days shall be shortened. We can understand from the prophetic words of Yeshua that as bad as it is in the beginning, the end of the 70th week of Daniel heralds something that is so horrific that without divine intervention, all life on earth would come to an end. Will it be worse than the flood of Noah? The days of Noah provide the third witness answering the question, what happens in 2030 A.D.? In order to understand this prophecy, you need some vital background information. Please take the time to go to www.ribvideos.com and watch the 2024 12-minute video titled The Mystery of the Aleph and click on Chapter 13 titled The Flood Prophecy Revealed in the Name of Adam. This video discloses a prophetic time duration prophecy that I've never publicly revealed and is the key that unlocks the connection between the flood and what is coming at the end of the 70th week of Daniel. If you have viewed the 2024 Mystery of the Elephant Tob, Chapter 13, then you know that the time duration between creation and the flood is 1,652 years. So with that important piece of information, let's do the math. Creation in 4005, going forward 1,652 years, lands you on 2353 B.C. on the Roman calendar. This 1,652-year duration of time is exactly 236 sabbatical cycles. 1,652 divided by 7 equals 236 sabbatical cycles. What happens when we multiply the time of the flood, as there is no question that it is also a sign that is mentioned over and over again in the New Testament as an end-time harbinger? 1,652 years times 2 equals 3,304 years, exactly 472 sabbatical cycles. 4 plus 7 plus 2 equals 13, the number of rebellion and corruption. If you go forward 3,304 years from the creation date of 4005 B.C., you end up on the year 701 B.C. 701 B.C. is the date of the siege of Jerusalem, preceded by 390 years of iniquity that the Lord revealed to Moses as a period of time that God would multiply by seven, giving Israel a time out in order to produce repentance. 390 times 7 equals 2,730 years of discipline for the house of Israel. The 701 B.C. siege sign plus 2,730 years brings you to 2030 A.D. So now we have a third witness that notifies us that something twice as bad as the flood of Noah is going to happen in the year 2030 A.D. Double the flood of Noah plus two siege signs arrives in Israel in 2030 A.D. What could this be? The three signs obviously have one thing in common, death, confusion, chaos, and war. And it forecasts the worst final siege of Jerusalem, not by the Assyrians, not by the Romans, not by the Chaldeans, but a siege by every nation on the earth. I think most of you have already figured out what is being prophesied by Ezekiel 4 and by the flood of Noah. It is the battle of Armageddon. Listen to Zechariah, the Old Testament prophet, and what he reveals about what is going to take place in 2030 AD in chapter 14, verse 2. Listen carefully to what Zechariah reveals. For I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses plundered, and the women raped. Half of the city shall go out into exile, but the rest of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then the Lord will go out and fight against those nations as when he fights on the day of battle. And in Zechariah 14 verse 12 we read, And this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets, and their tongue shall dissolve in their mouths. The year 2030 A.D. will be the conclusion of the time of the Gentiles described in the Bible. 
2030 A.D. will launch the final and worst war ever waged on the earth, bringing to a close the time of the Gentiles. What follows? Revelation 19 gives us a vision of what follows as the glory of the Lord appears in heaven, where the Lord is seen leading a glorious procession, riding a white horse, as he comes to judge and make war against his enemies, who will become ashes, according to the prophet Malachi, under believing Israel's feet. When it is all over, the believing remnant of Israel will enter into the kingdom of Yeshua HaMashiach, where Messiah will rule with a rod of iron and reign for 1,000 years. So here are the headlines in a nutshell. 2024 AD, on the Day of Atonement, the start of the 70th week of Daniel. 2028 AD, Passover completes the 1260 days as it announces the middle of the 70th week of Daniel which is when the abomination that causes desolation occurs. 2030 A.D. begins the wars that end in the Battle of Armageddon. 2031 A.D. on the Day of Atonement on Tishri 10 brings to an end the 2,520 days, seven years that are each 360 days long, ending the 70th week of Daniel as it inaugurates the 1,000-year reign of Messiah. What about the church? Well, I will leave that up to you to do the simple math. Math that should fill your hearts with unspeakable joy as it looks like we are about to finally be lifted up, changed to incorruptible creatures in the blink of an eye in order that we might go to our heavenly home just like Yeshua promised. Brothers and sisters, Maranatha. Everything I have produced on Rock Island Books over the past 15 years is now available to watch online or download at no charge, including over 220 videos, 14 of our best-selling illustrated books, 40 end times prophetic charts. All this is available to view and download at no charge. Go to ribvideos.com.